This is the Inquisitive Minds Podcast. Hey, thank you for tuning in the Inquisitive Minds Podcast. I'm your host, as usual, Johnny Smith. With me today, uh, my guest is a stand-up comedian from the Pittsburgh area, among many other things. He's also a DJ. Please welcome to the program, Dave Stewart. Dave, how you doing today? Dude, I'm great. Thank you for having me. This is really awesome. Yeah, no, man. Thanks for coming on. You uh, you, you reached out to me, and I genuinely appreciate it. Uh, you said you had some spooky stories to tell me, and uh, before we get into all that, guys, I just want to say real quick, uh, thank you for bearing with me uh, with the audio quality as of late. I know some of it's been kind of shoddy. Uh, upgraded some equipment in the, in the home studio now, so hopefully... Uh, things will be better. I am uh, learning as I'm growing here. You know, this is all uh, DIY. Uh, I could not get this mixer to work for the first three days because I had the master fader down, apparently. Yep. Did not know that was even a thing until some guy was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Okay. So, but hopefully, guys, from here on out, sound quality is going to be a little better. Uh, working on improving. But, Dave. Enough of that nonsense. Go on, brother. Well, what I'll tell you what, the sound is fantastic. This, this sounds fantastic. Sounds great. Thank you. I think that it has a there's a rumble to your voice, and it gives your voice a a velvety touch. It's it's like putting your hand a whole way in the honey pot, pulling that again. You know what I'm saying? All right, we'll go with that. You guys, can, <laughs> you guys can check me out on Wish on Quiet Thunder. Ooh, I'll be playing those smooth jams to get you through the night shift. Delilah. <laughs> I used to listen to her religiously. Oh, oh, uh, pun intended. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I used to love her all the time. But then when I saw her face, she didn't match It didn't the light voice. up! Exactly! I kind of thought she was going to be like more like, um, kind of like, not like a little old lady, but like like a school secretary. I didn't expect the blonde. Yeah, ex- that's the big thing. That really threw yeah. me off. She just, like, her show has like a... Not a darker demeanor, uh-huh. but like a darker tone. Like it's a yeah. dull at night. It's calmer. I'm thinking blues, velvets. Maybe yeah. got brown, dark hair. Yeah. Oh yeah, you think she'd be almost like a like a beatnik? Yeah. But she's like a surfer chick kind of. Yeah. Something yeah. Like yeah. That. Totally. Um, so I haven't been out this way in forever, dude. Um, what? So is this? This is Beaver Falls. Beaver Falls. I saw a guy come out of a store on the way up here. And he was like, tall and real thin. Like a biker dude, and he had like a big bushy beard and a bandana and a leather vest. And I was like, I had a tough biker guy that he got into a Jetta. And I was like, never mind. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of bikers up this way. Yeah, I saw a pagan at the uh, at the bike store last week. Oh, one time I was up at a so I went to school up at Slip Rock University. Um, go rock, I rock, rock, you rock. Okay, rock till education. Um, and one time we were at the North Country Brewery, which listen, if you ever want to get a sponsor. That's what you should get, okay? Because, damn it, it's amazing, right? North Country so, Brewery. North Shout Co- out. We can work together. North Country Brewery. The beer is great. The food is actually better. Sincerely, oh, okay? Oh, wow. Okay. It's a beautiful place up there. The, 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 the restaurant itself is, like, lots of, like, wood architecture and stuff and, like, woodwork and hippie art. It's awesome. Um, I was over one time. There was, a, there was an outlaw sitting on the, um, the front uh, okay. patio eating. I was, like, I had, like, literally just seen... Like a like any biography about like all the outlaw biker gangs and there's there was an outlaw out there that was pretty cool. Yeah, no, uh, one time I crashed a biker party. Yeah, I, at the time, like uh, I had the bigger beard, uh, I had the longer hair, uh, and a lot of times, which just with all the tattoos, people would assume I was into that lifestyle and culture. Yeah, which nothing against it, I'm just not. Yeah, uh, but there was this weird party I found with a buddy of mine in the backwoods. And we ended up going in and just like, I don't know, one guy walked up to me pretty friendly and introduced himself and like he told me his name, and we'll just say Rick. Yeah. And like, uh, I just used that for the whole time. I was like, hey, Rick said this is where the food is right now. And they're like, oh, he's with Rick. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and I just kind of fit in <laughs> and I ate, but I, I was a bit nervous, but it was fun. It was a wild experience. That was like the biker version of that part in, um, who had justice when they crashed that uh, the barbecue on the way to the road yes. trip? Yes, it was just like that. Yeah. Did you ever see that movie? No. Loki, okay, listen, listen. I, I'm just plugging everyone today, but there is a 
YouTube channel that my wife and I love called Prim's Hood Cinema. There's a pretty dope one I like real quick called Inquisitive Minds. Uh, oh, my bad. Guys, check that out. Like, <laughs> share, and subscribe or something. Do something with us. Uh, go ahead. Though. No, no, I'm sorry. Um, oh, well, once, uh, absolutely, please hit that s s crush, slam that like button, subscribe, yeah. get notifications for Inquisitive Minds podcast, right? Yeah. That's what's up. Prim's Hood Cinema is so funny. He's this tall, like, New York dude who just watches hood movies and it's hilarious to commentary. So you watch, like, um, like Juice, I think I've seen some of his clips. And just hysterical. He's so funny. And he did a thing about Play Justice, and that was just great. Um, Dave, you said today, though, you had some spooky stories for me. Yeah, man. You also had uh, a question for us to ponder along the paranormal. Yes. And then before that, you said you had uh, the most interesting fact you know? Yes. So we're going to lead out with that, and we'll get to the spooky stuff here. Sure. What's the most interesting thing you know, Dave? Okay. It's something that, like, you think about it, and it'll just kind of, like, like oh, can I curse in here, by yeah. the way? All right. Speak as you please. All right. It'll fuck your shit up, all right? Like, every day of your life until all right, forever. So um, human beings, as opposed to other animals, have a very limited range of vision and hearing. Okay. Uh, you mean in general or like a spectrum? This is like a light spectrum. Okay. And then this, the, the, um, the hertz spectrum, yeah, I guess. Okay. Uh, so it's probably called a different thing, but you know. Um, so humans have uh, three uh, cone receptors in our eyes. It helps us to basically see Roy G. Biv. Okay. Okay. Um, those of you that didn't pay attention in school, Roy G. Biv is red, orange, yellow, blue, go, uh, go, yeah, 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 yeah. green. Look, we don't call... We, it's, it's just Roy <laughs> Bibb around here. All right, so Roy G. Bibb. Roy Bibb. Okay, okay. <laughs> red, red, orange, yellow, green, Roy blue, Bibb, they go $10. Violet, okay? <laughs> he don't get the G until he pays up. That's why he, he said he don't got the greens. <laughs> yeah, you know what? He's going to see a G if he don't pay up. Yeah. Roy Bibb. Roy Bibb. Roy Bibb. <laughs> Bell, Bell Bibb DeVoe. There's going to be somewhere some guy named Roy Bibb. He's going to be like, yo, what the fuck did I do to that? <laughs> Someone's on his mat. Yeah, fuck Johnny Smith. Hey, um, Lord Bibb, I heard you got beef in Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, I ain't never been there, man. So, um, uh, we like we are unable to see ultraviolet light. We can't see x-ray. We can't see um, in, infrared, right. okay? So, um, like, example, the mantis shrimp has 16 cone receptors. We have three, mm -hmm. okay? They're able to see all across the spectrum of light. So, mantis shrimp are able to see infrared they can see x-ray they can see gamma they can see ultraviolet mm -hmm. okay because the infrared uh, yeah so and then um with our hearing obviously like dogs and cats have a higher mm -hmm. uh spectrum that we, that, as, uh, than we do for hearing like elephants tons of animals like make sounds lower and higher for us to hear so it's just it's a fact that the real world the real world um doesn't sound or look anything like how we think it does because reality is just perception there you go you know what i mean so there's colors that exist that we couldn't even comprehend like even if you if someone's able to somehow try to explain to you you your brain couldn't comprehend it because it's just beyond our ability to comprehend those colors mm -hmm. okay um like plants animals things that we see every day don't look at how we think they do it's just impossible for us to comprehend what we're seeing. Okay. Yeah. So like, um, so that just that has always just messed me up. Now these uh, different fields of vision, because mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna get into some spooky stuff. Do you think if we had as many cones as a mantis shrimp, we might be able to see more uh, paranormal activity? You know what? That's actually um, where I was hoping you were gonna go with that. Because I think that's probably would be the case. I think that um, so mantis shrimp are just terrified. Oh. Seeing ghosts <laughs> all the damn time. They don't even know what's going on. They're just screaming and running. Yeah, there's <laughs> just ghosts everywhere. That's the really the mantis shrimp would be normal though. Yeah, hey, yeah. Who's that? Yeah. Just a ghost. Yeah, I mean, it's, and just like like we said, like reality is just what you perceive, and you know, where you have like things like animals like snakes you can see in infrared. You know, um, bees have. Don't snakes you know, do something with like feeling the vibrations in the air with their tongue or something like that. Yeah, so snakes have what's called a Jacob's organ. So when they are doing their tongue thingy, they are picking up information from the, their taste in the air around them, which is helping them then get a better idea of what is happening around them. Why is it when humans taste the air, it's only parts? <laughs> 
Well, if you're out, if you're the only time you're like, oh, I tasted that, but nowhere else. You're never like roses. Hmm, that smells Man, good. Man, the absolute worst. So I have a, um, I had a girlfriend who had this. I won't say her name on uh, fucking name Stacy. And so Stacy is real sensitive to like smells and stuff. And um, she walked through someone's spark cloud and TJ Maxx and threw oh, up. Oh no! And, uh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and she's like a very well dressed, like very well educated, like you know, kind of fancy lady. So the of poor Stacy puking at TJ Maxx because she walked through a spark cloud to me oh, is it's beautiful. That's that's terrible. Well, that's that's interesting. I I, I wonder if uh, if we had more like. Uh, Detailed eyes in, in, in our previous incarnations, yeah. like like Neanderthals, like how was their vision? More yeah. Than? Well, for example, something that's really cool is that um, uh, pronghorn sheep that live in the American Southwest. Okay. Um, so one thing is that a lot of like goats and sheep actually have rectangular pupils, so they can see all four, four feet at one time. Prong- I'm sorry. They, 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 I'm sorry. They can see all four feet at once. They have uh, rectangular pupils. They, what do you mean, like all like, four of their feet? Yeah. So when they're like when they're just on all four legs, mm-hmm. they can see each of their feet. Oh, that's why. So it's like they can, they have like um, almost like wrap around rearview mirrors like you would it for a truck. I and I then, never knew that. So their eyeballs are actually shaped like this. Their pupils, I mean. Okay. So it's a different field of vision than like how we do. Okay. But pronghorn sheep actually have telescopic uh, um, eyes. So in theory, on a clear night, they can see the rings of Saturn. From Earth. Oh wow! Because their, their vision is that what that is that good. So they they can see because they live on like planes, where they can see basically for miles. So they can see if it's coming from far away. That's wild. You know, yeah. I have been dreaming about those. I don't know what were they Google glasses or whatever. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, oh, I would drop the money on those so fast. Dude, I, my my friend Amber had a buddy that had those had them shits. And he was at a party with them on, and we were just like, fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. And then the I went to the. the instant translator thing have you Mm -hmm. seen that Mm -hmm. like uh apparently there's this thing they're working on and if i'm wrong i'm sure somebody will correct me sure but it was like it it could translate you know whatever the people were saying Mm -hmm. uh into english or i'm just using english because that's what it's sure and then you could speak back but then it would translate it into whatever cantonese or or Russian, I guess. I don't know. Oh, that's really awesome. But yeah, I think that would be really dope, and I think that would bring the world closer together, honestly, if we could all communicate with each other more. Well, I remember, like, you know, he read this little blurb somewhere, a little, little blurry blurb, that made me think about it, and he was like, you know, with things like sign language, we could have a universal language. Like, if there was, like, an, like an international sign language we could all kind of get, all get on board with, we, not, we could have... That, that literally... People, whether you 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 know you were hearing impaired or not, you we would all have a language we all speak with sign language. Nothing against the hearing impaired or the deaf. Uh, however, I doubt that's my target audience. Oh. I'm doing a <laughs> podcast, but like sign language is so distracting. Like when you're speaking with someone who's doing sign language at yeah. the same time. I'm not saying it's wrong, don't do it or anything, but yeah. it's so distracting. Because, mm-hmm. like, I don't know, when I talk to people, usually I don't like to admit this, I'm staring at their, their mouth. Sure. You know, I try and look in their eyes, but, like, I'm very curious to see what their mouth does. I'm also always inspecting other people's teeth. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's my thing. It's like, oh, what's, what's going to teeth this guy got? Nope, this up. Uh, Johnny Smith is like, what that mouth do? Yeah, I'm just 24-7. I'm just window shopping <laughs> teeth all the time. Like, um... What the hell was I talking about? Where did my point go? Um, oh, something about how you hate people who are deaf? Oh, yeah, but I don't hate people who are deaf. <laughs> no, no, the sign language is so distracting because I just, I can't help but focus on that. Oh, but actually what's interesting uh, through the pandemic with uh, people wearing masks is like, you don't even realize how much you look at people's mouth when they're speaking. And that kind of helps you understand. We are kind of always subconsciously lip reading, whether we want to, want to know, you know, we um, realize it or not. Yeah. So there was times when, like, believe like, me, like, I know how much people fixate on the mouth. Oh, okay. I, 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 I'm well, a victim. Well, well, for example, just clearly, like, you know, I, I speak really quickly. It's something that I always work on. Actually, um, doing stand up has helped me because it makes you like you want to get your jokes out. Yeah. So I have to focus and speak clearly and slowly. So if you notice, I take a lot of pauses when I do stand up. That's why, because I'm trying to like not, you know, go too fast. 
But um, so I think that for me, like someone who's a, who's a fast speaker, it's been hard because people are always like, "What did you say?" Because mm-hmm. they can't see my mouth moving. Well, I uh, I have thought about this a lot, and the mumblers, mm-hmm. the fast talkers, yeah, uh, the people that don't enunciate. This has been really hard for them, and I thoroughly enjoy it. So basically, yinzers, what you're saying. Well, as much as like, they frustrate <laughs> me from not being able to talk normally, yeah. it's not the mask. Speak clearly. I had a coworker at a restaurant I worked at. And she was a real sweet lady, but I've never. And I do, I do a show where we just make fun of Pittsburghers. Okay, I love Pittsburgh, but yeah, it's ridiculous. I've never met someone with a thicker Yinzer accent where I'm like, I need subtitles. Like, one time she was saying the word straw, like what you drink out of, mm-hmm. and she was like, can you just hand me so many straws? You do such a good Pittsburgh accent. Oh, thank you. I, I don't know if I mentioned it. Like, I absolutely hate the Pittsburgh accent. <laughs> like, shout out to Pittsburgh. Love Pittsburgh. Love Pittsburghers. Yeah. But the fucking Pittsburgh accent is the worst in the world, and especially when it's, like, native and strong. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. my God, get it together, Grandma. Well, so I, I'm i not super well traveled, but what's fun, the times I've been to, you know, uh, Boston, been to Las Vegas, been to um, yeah, up in Maine and the Carolinas and been to Florida and whatnot. Like, I've had, like, people in Boston, Massachusetts be like, you talk fucking weird, kid. Wicked, yeah. wicked, crazy, oh, weird kid. They like, got a rough accent. Yeah, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to hear it. You know, Will Hunting. Like, I don't want to hear you it. You know, my like, favorite accent to listen to is like the Wisconsin, oh. um, Minnesota type weird. Um, my my cheese lady. My grandpa just passed away in December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you know, Grandpa Bob, I miss you. But uh, he was from Wisconsin, and. Yeah, no, how you doing there, big guy? I'll oh, work up to camp, you know, for yeah. a couple days I there. love it. I love it. It's just, to me, it's like, ah, that's relaxing. It, mm. it, it disarms me, is what it does. Oh, that's funny. But uh, as soon as I hear, like, Boston or Pittsburgh or ignorant New York. Oh, yeah. Is, and somebody's going to say I'm a piece of shit for this. But, like, the uneducated, violent New Yorker who's never been outside of his borough oh, yeah. who starts screaming is the, like, shut the fuck up. Oh. All right. I'm sorry. We got really off topic. <laughs> that, you, if you listen to the show regularly, you know that's what happens. Dave, right. paranormal stories. So sure. We're looking forward to them. All Shoot right. one at me. Okay. So, um, this is probably, like, here, I'll do my cryptid one, then my ghost one. Okay. You, okay. All right. So, um, I am a guy who's, like, I like to do a lot of stuff. I, I think I'm just like, I hate sitting still, so I do a lot of things. So, um, from 2009 to 2011, I played in a punk band called Talk About It. And we had a show at the Garfield Artworks that used to be on Penn Avenue in what Garfield. What did you play? Guitar. Okay. And um, I was still living at home in Natrona Heights, Pennsylvania, home of Highlands Golden Rams. Um, see, that's the right there was the proper response um <laughs> so I, I grew up in just like i, I always said i had a i've had a cartoonishly like american upbringing okay i grew up in like a small middle class suburb real quick how old are you dave i'm 36 okay turned 36 actually august 5th um happy birthday oh thank you very much that's what, I was, that's, that's what I was fishing for here's the here's the pittsburgh answer to that uh, my sister's was on the seventh, and my mom's on the nineteenth. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, um, also living uh, back in back at home. Okay. We might go downtown. We might go downtown. Hey, hey, mom! At the pot, at the Buckos game, they had your favorite uh, fire with the purple yeah. ones. They had all the ones you like, mom. I don't know why I do this to myself because I set you up for that perfect. Um. So. Um, <clears throat> I was still living back at home, and uh, we had a show at the Girlfriend Art Works, and the show didn't get done until 10.30, so you gotta, like, you know, pack up your shit, say your goodbye, say thanks to the promoter, say hi to the bands that were touring, you blah, gotta blah, linger. Blah. You gotta linger. Network. It's, yeah, it's, it's a comedy show. You gotta yeah. go, you know, say what's up to everybody, you know? I don't like this asshole, but I gotta so, go say yeah. <laughs> Hey, bro, good set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, I feel like I've been told, good set, 
fraudulently said we died. Oh, okay, yeah. hey, uh, hey, man, good set. I'll Thank tell people you. good set if I wasn't even in the room. Oh. <laughs> I don't care anymore. It doesn't matter what the fuck I say. And uh, furthermore, I don't know shit about fuck. Oh, and honestly, though, like, it always makes me feel good. I mean, I mean thank you. It's, you know, like, I'm, this, I'm, I'm that guy. I do not care how well someone says I did at my set. I don't care how many people laughed. After my set, I'm always like, oh, it fucking sucked. Fuck. Ah, every time, time. One time I bombed, walked outside, smoked cigarettes. Another comic drug me was like, good set. I said, good fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but that's the thing. It's like, don't. Like, okay. Salutation Shades, and welcome back to your one-stop shop for all things strange and unusual, Talking with Shadows, the conversation everyone has, but no one wants to admit to. Here with your hosts, Vic Whaley. And Marcus D. Now come along with us as we explore the most obscure things our universe has to offer. We specialize in helping people make sense of the most bizarre phenomenon you'll ever come across. You'll get all the great topics such as UFOs, cryptids, and psychic phenomenon, but also some stories that are so spectacular, they scare people to believe that they're true. Now take a seat, and welcome to the One Candle Society. But always remember, keep believing. Because we'll keep listening. Again, I saw this in a meme, everyone loves the memes. It said, it's okay to tell your homie they can't rap. Okay? Yeah. yeah. I believe that. It's okay. You can tell your friend they're not funny. You can tell your friend the band sucks. Tell your friend they can't rap because you're gonna help them in the long run. Don't lie to him. Okay, real real quick. I'm sorry. Uh, this is to my close personal homie who doesn't want any uh, like uh, any light shined on him. He doesn't want any spotlight. But I know he listens to this regularly. I don't know when he'll hear this. Yeah. But bro, I love you to death. But you know you can't rap. For <laughs> you have zero bars. He would have bars if it was like. 1982, uh-huh. and we were rapping about the lamp and my hat and my cat and my ball. Like, yeah, you didn't have that. But otherwise, bro, you, you can't fucking rap. Put the beat down. We'll go from there. He, he could rap like, like Curtis Blow basketball. He was, like, he was like Curtis Blow basketball if Curtis was doing Blow. <laughs> Which he probably was. All right, we don't incriminate anybody so, here. Curtis! All right, he had, he had Jared Carl something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, if you if you had a Jader curl at any time, you have at least done a bump off of one hooker's ankle. Okay, <laughs> just want to put that out there. What did I say at the show? If you're wearing white leather shoes, if you ever meet a man with white leather sho- leather shoes, he's got kids out there that he doesn't know. Oh about. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, okay, so I had the show and I'm getting home and I'm on 28, and so it's like 12:15 at night. Okay, so the middle of the night, a little bit after midnight. And I am driving on 28 North, and I've just passed the uh, Chestnut exit, and I'm going towards the um, uh, Pittsburgh Mills. Okay. All right? So the exits go Cheswick, um, uh, Pittsburgh Mills, Creighton, and then uh, Trenum, and Mission Heights. All right? So I'm getting closer to the, um, uh, I'm passing the exit for the Pittsburgh Mills, and there is a, like, an overpass that if you get off the other exit, like if you're getting off, um, like you can get to the mills, um, like from like Creighton, excuse me. So there's like a road pass that goes from like up there or in 28 and stuff to cross go to the mills that way. By the way, Russellton? Yeah. So like if you get off um, 28 um, going the other direction, this is how you go to the mills. Okay. okay. So there's an overpass and I'm going under it. And right when I go under this, under the overpass, this big animal runs in front of my car. Okay, um, and to this day, sincerely, I mean, like, what I'm assuming it was was like probably an old or like a like a malnourished black bear. Okay. Okay. Um, it was leggy, like it was weirdly leggy. It was running, running on all fours. Okay. It had kind of like shaggy. Uh, like shaggy hair though and the hair kind of like reflected in my headlights like almost kind of silvery and it was shaggy so we're like bears usually have like kind of like shorter dark hair you know they're not like like a black black bear their hair isn't shaggy like a brown bear you know what I'm saying yeah and but it was big it was gonna gonna, it was leggy 
and which I feel like is kind of weird for bears, but usually bears are so puffy, you know what I mean? So like, yeah, they, they have a healthy layer of fat around yeah. them. Yeah, I think when they were skinny, maybe they were a little leggier. And it was running. All sides are beautiful. And, uh, <laughs> and it wasn't like he was like um, he wasn't really in a sprint. He was like booking it. It was kind of like a very labored, like a gallop. Okay. And he was kind of like going across the the road, and I could see his head. And I got a big head, so you know. And he, <laughs> but it had like a, but it didn't have like a short snout, like a black bear. It had like, its head was shaped more like a horse or a goat. Like it had like a longer, like snout, and big eyes. And you could see in its mouth, and it had like a mouthful of teeth. But it looked like I mean this animal was like it got, got beat by the ugly stick. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it just looked like it just looked fucked up. But it had just ran across and I didn't see it. You know what I mean? I was just kinda like so the whole way home, I turned off my radio. Mm-hmm. I was just like what did I I so to this day, like, I can't say it was a bear, I can't say it was a deer, I can't say it was a dog. Because I sincerely don't know. I can't tell you what I saw. Did you ask anybody about this, or is there any lore of anything out there? Oh, I've remember I spent five years at the Pittsburgh Zoo. So I've asked zoo. I've asked people who have decades of experience with big mammals. Mm-hmm. I've asked. Um, I talked to a guy at the, uh, <laughs> the Carnegie Museum, and I'm pretty sure he was just like, "Please leave me alone." Uh, That's fair. I bothered this poor man for like, t- like, like ten minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that was, like, that area doesn't have any kind of lore. I mean, like, every once in a while, like, a, like a bear walks through town. Mm-hmm. Some gets one on, like, a, um, on, a, on a porch camera, you know, but... From the snout, though, that's the weird thing yeah. about it. It doesn't sound like a Bigfoot or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, from the, I don't know, from the description, does the word dogman come to mind? Has anyone mentioned that to you at all? Um... No, I mean, you know, you know, there's DMX, he passed away. Uh, no, there, uh, there was uh, uh, people telling me about a cryptid uh, called Dogman. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, because when I initially interviewed the guy about it, I said something to the effect of, oh, Dogman, like a werewolf? And he goes, <laughs> don't be silly, werewolves aren't real. Um, I, I guess it's like a, just a, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it took me a minute, and I was just like, what? And, uh, but, uh, you know, like a large dog cryptid type thing. Yeah. I mean, but I don't know. It could just have been a malnourished bear. Could have been yeah. something. That's honestly what I was, If it was anything, that's probably what it was. It was, you know, like, uh, it was, it was like, um, I think it was kind of like, a, uh, it was kind of like, I think it was late spring. So okay. it may have been like a bear that's come out of like, you know, months of hibernation, and it's kind of like getting ready to like start eating again. You know what I mean? Well, I've been saying for years that uh, Al Gore was right, and it was man bear pig. <laughs> so it was, it, you know, it seemed super serial uh, <laughs> for what I could see. You know, um, I, I'm I'm so disappointed because I drive around in so many remote spots at, uh, at night. Like after I leave here, I'm going to go to work. Okay. Um, and I have yet to see. And it, not that I want to be terrified. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not that I'm trying to take a piss in the back of the side road yeah. and a monster comes out. But like, just casually drive and see something walk past them. Yeah. I'd respect it. That's one of those things like, you know, our, our, our lives are so short. You know what I mean? And, we, and I've always said that, like, I want in my lifetime something that we deemed impossible to be, be possible. So I loved it in my lifetime. Like, we find Bigfoot. There's evidence that there's like, like aliens visit Earth or like. Honestly, um, bro, wouldn't yeah. cell phones be be that though? What's that? Like, cause you're what two years older than I am, so yeah. we grew up essentially around the same time. Yeah. Back in the day, you know, like the turtles, communicator. Yeah. Those are just cell phones, yeah. FaceTime now. Yeah. But back then, it was so impossible. Well, even think about like, like Dick Tracy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. You know, that was like a, a serialized cartoon drawn in what the '40s or something, something like right? That, yeah. And it had risk communicators. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Like, I'm a barista. You know, I, I work, at, work, at a, work at a coffee shop, right? People pay for their goddamn latte now with a bloop with their watch. Mm-hmm. Like, actually, it's funny is that um, I'm happy you actually mentioned this because um, I think all the time the things that we do all the time that are normal to us are normal to us. Thirty years ago, 
it would, it would seem utterly impossible. Well, even taking it back to 30 years ago. Yeah. Ninja Turtles. Not Ninja Turtles. Power Rangers. Yeah. Zordon. Go. Yeah. Like, boom. Yeah. On a phone. Like, I remember uh, getting a toy that was like a little Power Rangers wrist. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. And to me, that was the coolest shit. I'm like, yeah. Rangers, we need you. You know what? I, I feel, okay, when I was eight and nine years old, I loved Power Rangers. I was in my jam. So, my bedroom was all Power Rangers. Okay. I, I had curtains, my sheets and my comforter, my pillowcakes, and I also had a nightlight that was dope as fuck. And it was like a little TV, and on the front of the TV, it's Power Rangers um, out of uniform, okay? Mm-hmm. Don't turn that some bitch on, okay? It projected on your ceiling Power Rangers in their uniforms. Oh, that's pretty okay? sick. Okay? And I feel like when I worked at this little hipster bar called Remedy in Lawrenceville, when I worked there, if I had that in my bedroom, I'd be pulling mad hipster girls, man, straight up. Even something like this. You know, four years ago, I'd be a guy in the basement on ham radio. Mm-hmm. You know, just to have this technology accessible yeah. to the common man. Yeah. Um, I don't know, that, that's interesting, though. Like a near encounter, potential cryptid. What about, uh, what about the, you said it was a ghost? Well, I wouldn't say it was a ghost. Okay, so, um... Uh, my parents, my parents split when I was real little. Okay. So, um, when I was like almost two years old, my mom moved us into basically was the first floor of a three-unit house in East Toronto, Pennsylvania. Okay. okay? So, um, right by Grandview Elementary School. What what Grandview represent? I don't know. That wasn't very cool. Um, <laughs> anyway, so um, uh, we were on the first floor. It was us, and then. My mom's friend Pat and her husband, her kids, and the third floor was empty. That's this is important, okay? Third floor is empty. So um, we empty, we, just empty, or empty. empty unit, or empty rooms. Empty unit, okay. third floor, empty unit, okay? So um, my mom moves us in and everything, and you know, first night, like puts me to bed, like seven o'clock. I'm a baby, you know what I mean? Puts me to bed, watches some TV, uses the restroom, and around like eleven o'clock. She heard this sound. It sounded like like deep chimes from a big clock, like bong bong bong. Like a know? grandfather clock. Yeah, or like okay. a like a like a good like a big wall clock or something, or you know like a big clock. And then flavor flavor was hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so um, next day, same same thing. She puts me to bed, watch some TV, use the restroom around around 11 p.m. or so. Same deal. Bom 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 bom. Okay. So third day, we're just chilling, and uh, we're in the backyard playing. Cause I'm a baby, and babies play. You know what I'm saying? Well, here comes Pat with her kids, Danny and Angie, and um, my mom goes, "Oh, hi, I'm Kimberly. This is David. He's moved in. You know." And she's like, "Oh, I love your clock." And Pat goes, "Oh, what clock? Oh, you yeah, you know, there's that big, you know, wall clock you guys have, or whatever that chimes at you know at, at night. The same thing sounds was super nice." And Pat's like, I don't know what you're talking about. We don't have clock that yeah. chimes. Oh, how about the third floor? Like, oh, it's empty. No one's up there. My mom's like, I'm hearing this clock at 11. Are you sure it's not up? She's, Pat's like, listen, the landlord paid me to actually clean that, that unit. So I know it's empty. Mm-hmm. So my mom's like, okay, fine. Like, you know, whatever. I just, you know. And um, so the, the fourth night, my mom is like, I'm going to hear this clock. You can find out where it's coming from. Okay. So, same deal. Puts me in the bed. Watch TV. Goes to the restroom. And she's like, I don't hear it. Like, don't, you know, come on, man. Where's, where's the clock? So she's finished up and she goes to um, open up the medicine cabinet. And when she does, all of these springs and cogs and gears fall out of nowhere into the sink. Oh. And she said that it wasn't like they fell out of the mess and cabinet themselves. It was like they booped out of nowhere. So when she opened the cabinet, it was like... That's poof, weird. Into the, and it was like parts of the old clock. They, yeah. were, they were like rusty. You know? And she put them in a, in a jar and everything and told people the story. And, you know, my, you know people were like, Kimberly, like, you're messing. This is, this is a joke. She's like, no, no, no. This is what happened. People don't like to believe this stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and she never heard, heard it again. Okay, never heard of the clock again. Okay, and I lived there till I was eight years old. I never heard it. Okay, 
and then we moved to the house my mom lives in now um, in 1993 and um, when we moved my mom said that she packed that she took that jar put it in a box herself sealed it up we got to the new house that jar was gone oh wow yeah that's pretty crazy um, Dave, before we move on, mm-hmm. real quick, you got anything you want to promote? Oh, um, actually, I will. I will be. Um, this will be out in a couple weeks. Yeah. So Keep that I, in mind. Yeah. So actually, this is perfect. I'm sorry. Here, let me. Um, what are your social medias while you're looking that up? Oh, you can find me on Instagram at biggestdave412, and then you can also can find me on um, TikTok uh, at, at, at just biggestdave. That's a that's a, a social media platform I haven't got on yet. Oh. Um, I just need the time because I got to cut a bunch of videos down and make yeah. one minute clips out of a bunch of episodes. Yeah. And it's not something I can't do. It's just a time constraint. Oh, for sure, for sure. And what's crazy is that like some of the videos I've made where it comes out being like twenty seconds long, it's embarrassing because I'm like it's embarrassing because I am like a man in my mid to late thirties. Yeah. The fact that I've spent like at least two hours of my day filming different angles and then editing it all down for basically like 20 seconds for a social media thing but it's fine I don't know but anyway so um biggest Dave biggest Dave just biggest underscore Dave you can find me um Dave on, Thomas is rolling in his grave right Dave now. Thomas He's like what? you're the biggest Dave have you seen the triple <laughs> um, my buddy Ed and I, uh, we had a Wendy's, as you saw there, there was a Wendy's in Eastern Heights, Pennsylvania, or as we call it, the Natty, so Natty Heights, there's a Wendy's there, and when Dave Thomas passed away, we took them a sympathy card. Oh, wow. It just, it just, it just to be like, hey, you know, we we love his burgers. Well, he's looking for that. I'm going to go with another one. Biggest Dave. I don't know, Mr. Batista's going to have something to say <laughs> about that. Um, oh, I can't find any. Oh, here we go. So on September 11th, I'll actually be at Morgantown Brewing Company in West Virginia with our friend Cody Cannon. <coughs> <coughs> it's shocking, I know. So. Yeah, it, it took my breath away. Um, yeah. This will air after this is done already, but I'm actually down in uh, Morgantown with Cody on Monday. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. You know, I met Cody. Uh, we both opened for Charlie Virgos. Okay. Um, actually, back at Brain Bridges. That's how long ago that oh, okay. was. So it was back at the old, back at the old hand bones. If you send me that uh, image of the flyer, too, I'll put it up. Oh, awesome, video. awesome. I don't think there is one yet. Oh, okay. Okay, no no problem with that. Yeah, shout out to Cody Cannon. Uh, dope dude, check out his podcast, too. Um, he's getting around a bunch, doing a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I think a little while ago he had Tommy Chong on his podcast. Oh, word. If, if I'm not mistaken, which, fucking amazing get. I think he went to L.A. for a while. I think maybe that's where it happened, possibly. No, this was like three, four months ago. Was it in West Virginia? Yeah, I think it was like a, you know, like a Zoom or Oh, something. sure, sure. But he, I'm pretty sure he had Tommy Chong on this part. Oh, that's rad. Yeah, and if I'm mistaken, forgive me, everybody. <laughs> I see a lot of um, shit. I showed my wife um, Up in Smoke recently. Okay. And she, she liked it, and I just, that was one of those movies that, like, I saw I was probably, like, too young to watch it, but it also kind of helped me, like, um, learn what kind of weirdo I am. And I was like, this is weird, and I like this type of thing. I don't know if there's such a thing, but long-term fans of Johnny Smith <laughs> <coughs> will know there's a surprisingly a high amount of, uh, I guess you'd consider them classic or cult classic movies. Uh-huh. I've never seen. Oh, right Up in Smoke's one of them. Yeah, man, Up in Smoke. Um, but I've seen Sister Act about 200 times. Oh, dude, I love Sister Act. I strip, I, um... Sister Act and uh, Sister Act 2 are awesome, and I love that, like, um, like, in Sister Act 2, nothing about that movie makes any sense, but it's awesome. Like, <coughs> the plot of that movie is absolutely bananas. Well into my 20s before I realized the pun of Back in the Habit. <laughs> well into my 20s before I realized that. So. You know, you know what I think is the funny thing about life? Is that everyone, like, your family has movies that you like as a family. Oh. Or it's just movies that you like, and you don't know why. One of the movies that just, I don't know why it's popped my head, but my family, we all love this movie that no one's seen but us, I swear. It's called Hearts and Souls. It came out in like 1993, and it stars Robert Downey Jr. The cast is, the cast of this movie 
is as if they were like playing pickup basketball. Like, you know, it's just weird. So the cast is like Robert Downey Jr., Alfred Wooder, Kira Sedgwick, Tom Sizemore, Charles Grodin. Um, I feel like Robert Loja is in this shit for some reason, but I think I'm wrong. Damn, but, we are doing deep cuts with yeah, Robert Loja. Yeah, Robert Loja. But, uh, yeah, like, it's this movie about, like, these people were on a bus in the 60s and it crashes and they all die and their souls get attached to this little boy that's born at the same time as Robert Downey Jr. Mm. And when he's little, he can see them and they hang out, but they keep getting him in trouble. So they decide to, like, fade away and become, like, not visible to him for, like, his whole life. And then one day, <clears throat> like, the bus driver who crashed their bus, as penance for killing them, has to drive his bus, like, in the afterlife, picking up souls and taking them to the afterlife. Okay? So he's, like, a shitty version of the guy in the river sticks type of deal, he's on a bus. It's a weird sound in the movie. It, dude, it really is. I love when there's movies, I bet you there's a movie right now that you love, if you told me the plot, I'd be like, that sounds fucking bananas, dog. But <laughs> oh, I'm sure there is. I remember seeing this movie, Bully, back in the day. Oh, with, um, uh, Brett, uh... I have no idea. Brad Renfro? I, and, and is it about, like, when they kill Nick Stahl because he's a bully and they all kill him at the same time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. But, like, the one kid rapes him and some shit, like... It's a, yeah, it's a bananas movie. It's a, it's a wild-ass movie. Well, you know, it's based on a true story. You know what? Yeah. Just a prelude to that. The reason I ended up seeing that, because at one point when I was, like, 14, oh. maybe 13, uh, the cable channel had turned on the, uh, like, the, the pay-per-view movies. Yeah. And, like, I felt if I turned that channel, <laughs> I would lose those free privileges. So I watched, you know, a bunch of movies I would have never watched just because they were on... And they're free. Coincidentally, though, that's how I got into Dogma. Um, for the Dogma's awesome. The funny thing that you said about that is that I remember like being a kid, and my mom would like see the paper, like like she like, my mom would be like, "Honey, hey, this weekend's free Disney," and she go yeah. buy and she go buy like free bl- like, like four blank tapes, and we just tape a Disney di- channel on it, okay? And then um, same thing with like HBO. Hey, it's free HBO, so we gotta tape movies. Yeah. So. We had all these movies that were like taped off of like the free HBO, and I remember I had this one tape that I played till it broke, and the tape was um, Three Ninjas, okay. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, huh. and Ernest Scared Stupid on one tape. Oh my lord! I played that thing till it lit on fire. That sounds terrible. Oh, yeah. as an adult, as an adult now, sitting watching those three sound terrible, but I can understand as a child how they were appealing. Yeah, yeah. Have you noticed how much John Cena is starting to look like Ernest, by the way? <laughs> like, just the facial features. And have you seen the new Suicide Squad? Yeah. Phenomenal fucking movie. I thought it was really good. Beautifully done. Well, because it was basically a Marvel movie with DC characters. Like, James James Gunn is just, like, a genius. So just let him Visually make stunning. Yeah, yeah. And it was just, like, there were so many reasons why it was better than the first one. Mm-hmm. It's just a better movie. Like, think about, like, the first movie. Speaking of John Cena... He was phenomenal in that. He was great. He was hilarious. He was I loved his, yeah. act, his acting. He's like one of those people who is like, I think he's just genuinely funny. You know? But it, there's people, though, that like, that movie, I didn't like it very much, but there's that movie Trainwreck. Never seen it. Yeah, but like, LeBron James plays himself. He plays Bill Hader's best friend. Okay. So it's this joke that like, Bill Hader's best friend in the movie is LeBron James, and they like hang out and stuff. But it's like LeBron James, since I will say it sincerely, seems to really have a grasp of how comedy works. MC Auto Detailing is a home-based detailing company located in Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. At MC Auto, we take care of all of your detailing needs, from a basic hand wash to a complete makeover of your vehicle. Busy schedule? MC Auto is also mobile. You can get your vehicle detailed in the comfort of your own home. With a five-star rating on Google, we treat your vehicle as if it was our own. For a free quote and more information, contact MC Auto on Facebook and Instagram at MC Auto Detailing LLC or call 724-462-4863. MC Auto Detailing, who doesn't like a clean car? He's just a basketball player. He's yeah, just maybe. gifted uh, from everything. Yeah. God was like, give him everything. <laughs> but like, but it's frustrating because people like John Cena, like LeBron James. I hope LeBron James has a very small penis. <laughs> I hope it's tiny. That's why he's never strayed from his wife. 
and he's ashamed of it because he's got everything fucking else in the goddamn world. Listen, dude, that I bet you that thing is like a is like a brown football bat, just like <laughs> you know. <laughs> I would love to hear LeBron James come out and be like, "Look, y'all, from the waist down, I'm Irish." Oh, <laughs> I'd be like, "Yes, finally." We got one in the NBA. No, we had John Stockton, too. I oh, assume. absolutely. I'm sorry. Dude, listen. I love John listen, Stockton. I don't listen, know why I'm taking shots. As, as His a, penis is probably adequate. As a 36-year-old man, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, this is like my like old man hill I die on. I miss and loved watching the NBA in the 90s. Oh, yeah, I absolutely. I loved it. And they had, they had like, I loved all the great duos because you had, like, you know, Jordan Pippen. Mm-hmm. You had uh, Stockton and Malone. Mm-hmm. You had Kemp and Peyton up in Seattle. Mm-hmm. And it was just a great time to watch NBA basketball. It was great. I loved it. Absolutely. I, I don't know. I, I think we all look back on our younger days, and no matter yeah. what time period they're in, yeah. you think it was better back then. Yeah. Because there's guys that are going to obviously argue, well, the 80s, you had to be a man. Yeah. And, you know, those guys, were, well, the 70s, you had to know how to play ball. Yeah. You know, the 60s, you had to learn how to dribble before you could do anything. That's what these kids can't do these days, is dribble. Oh, you know, shit like that. Well, one thing I will say, that for our generation, we have Michael Jordan. Yeah, we have Michael Jordan. I will say that the thing that we did have better is no one could beat our era of like Saturday morning cartoons. Oh, it, that sincerely was the best. It'll never be that good again because things weren't like old cartoons were like kind of dumb, mm-hmm. and then like now I feel like they're kind of like just it's like it's not like too, like too soft. Well, we, had, we had so much like, violence and sexual innuendo, and it was amazing. I, I learned about that a little bit, and it was because of Reagan's deregulation. Yeah. Uh, I know I went off on Reagan a couple podcasts ago, uh-huh. uh, but that was the first time that cartoons were allowed to advertise for children. Oh. So we were having some cartoons specifically made just to sell toys. Oh, absolutely. Well, that, that's what uh, He-Man was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He-Man. So, so, like, before that, you know, it was just entertainment we need to get ratings but those were actually well now that we can advertise to the kids yeah they want to watch this show before they can buy the shit yeah that's why everything was so engaging that's it there was that reminds me did you see that documentary about the, the toys that made us mm-hmm. that's just what you're talking about because you're talking about like how the you know like the invention of he-man mm-hmm. and then like you know gi joe and stuff like that it was like it was like uh so those cartoons from the 80s like, like gi joe and then like um uh, like they had like the Ewa cartoon and stuff. It was just to sell toys. You like know, that's it. Um, and I know you had something else you wanted to talk about. Yeah. But before I get to that, I just and maybe because I lived through it. Okay. Maybe because I experienced it. But I I hear how people go crazy over certain things now. Uh, Harry Potter or whatever the fuck the kids are into. Because I'm yeah. not. You know, I don't know. Yeah. But Ninja Turtles. Yeah. In the mid to early 90s, mm-hmm. it was a fucking bonanza. Yeah. I literally had Ninja Turtle everything. Yeah. Like, they had everything. And they were fucking everywhere. You couldn't throw a rock without hitting someone who loved the Ninja Turtles. Well, you, I saw the first movie in, in theaters. I was like, I was four years old. Probably and blew your goddamn mind. Well, I didn't comprehend that those were guys in suits. So, legitimately, I thought that, like, because I had a... So, this is... Uh, this sounds so janky, but... Those like, were 45-year-old yeah. men in those suits, by the way. Uh, oh, for real? Yeah, they were They were well, not young fellas. Well, I do know that um, the guy that played K- uh, Kano or Kato in the second movie, like, the guy who was like, the pizza flavor guy... Okay. Okay? He... That's... um Because oh, he's actually... He made his... Things I Wasn't he in Surf Ninjas? Well, yeah, he was in Surf Ninjas. By the way, I've actually- never seen that movie, but from playing the tape in Ninja Turtles, I watched that advertisement a thousand oh, that's times. That's amazing. Actually, the guy that plays his like bodyguard in Surf Ninjas is his dad in real life. Okay. Um, his name's Ernie. I think it's Ernie Reyes. Ernie Reyes Jr. Is he is Hispanic? Like no, he's Filipino. Ah. Okay. So um, Spain occupied the Philippines for many years. So Why he's is a Hispanic Asian? Well, that's that's why you meet so many like like Filipinos that have names like like Rodriguez and, and, and Gonzalez is because of Spain. Um, uh, like I had a friend in, in college who her boyfriend was, was Filipino and his name was Keith Hernandez. Oh boy. Um, but uh, he made his film debut. He was he had a little part in the movie um, The Last Dragon. Okay. Okay. You ever seen that before? Nah, uh, no. You should. It's awesome. I, um, people tell me that about about <laughs> Die Hard. Yeah. People tell me that about so many movies. I'm just like, uh, mm. but uh. But they keep making movies. Like if they stopped making movies for like ten years, 
I'd probably catch you, up. You on can catch ball. up. <laughs> um, oh no! So just like um, basically is that he got the part of Kato in the second movie because he was probably the youngest guy. He actually was one of the turtles, the dude martial arts in the first movie. That's how he got to be in the second movie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and also all the guys that play the turtles in their costumes have small roles in the movie itself. I didn't so know the that. guy who's the pizza guy at the beginning of the movie, that's Michelangelo. Okay. And then one of the foot uh, like foot clan guys is one of the turtles. And I I wanna say that also um, one of the guys that plays uh, one of April Leo's cameramen is also one of the turtles. By the way, that's how you do a fucking movie. Because all three of those, even the wacky third one, still hold up. Yeah. Kappa. Yeah, dude, that 70s. that third movie is, is, it's like it's but it's like the quality of the costumes is like you're going from like oh, oh my bad it's like you're going from like Jim Henson to like Party City. Have you seen uh, the Turtles tour where they did music? Oh, I oh. had a tape of it where they were in concert, and you want to talk about shoddy costumes? Right there. Listen. This is what I was going to mention this earlier. I didn't have the tape of the coming out of their shells tour. That's what it was. I had the making of the wow. coming out of their shells tour. So I never even saw a full song or what the real show. Behind the scenes. I saw, but this is the theme though. This is this and this is what like I was like you know seven right. This is what like fucked my shit up because in the making of. They act like the turtles are real dudes, not people in costumes. Oh. So they're like, you know, this this this, this like recording that like nerd guy is like. So there they were, you know, the movies are done. So they're just in the sewer making music, and we're like, hey, these guys are great. And like, so I was like, oh wow, the turtles can play now. Yeah, wow, that's hilarious because I had the making of uh, the second movie. Like oh, I had all three movies, and then I had. the Turtles on tour, uh, and then the making of the second movie, uh, and they actually it was a real like showed the animatronics and like oh that's really cool yeah I feel like I know um, who you're talking about and I think that was Kevin Clash the voice of Splinter I have no idea because I think that he because I think the guy who did the voice of Splinter also is Elmo but I think wait here let me I'm gonna because I feel like we're gonna give people some misinformation here. Real quick then, from the uh, Turtles World Tour, I remember the worst song on there is the fucking song sung by Splinter. Skipping the stone. Yeah. <laughs> you. Um, Get the fuck out of here, you old man. You old rat, I guess I should say. Uh, I feel, I feel like I remember um, Michelangelo singing like a surfing song and it was like surf surf and subterranean again it yeah, was that. Like that and then um oh yeah ernie reyes jr was kino okay okay and yeah kevin clash is splinter and that's the voice he's also elmo okay what well, didn't that guy have some allegations about inappropriate conduct with minors i i think he may have done some 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 diddling <laughs> I think I think he did some diddling. Um, I don't know, but it's your saxophone. Oh, that's terrible. I hate that a lot. <laughs> I hate that so much. What if what if what if it was like like a blind date between like Elmo and then like Kevin from the Office? It's like, hello, Elmo. Hello, Kevin. <laughs> I can't afford to buy you dinner, but I can cook you stuff in the office. I got a hand up my ass. I hate that. I hate that so much. I hate. Hearing L come out of your face, I hate it so much. <laughs> well, they say the only impression I can do is Bane, and I'm trying to explain to him I'm a multitude. Oh right. Mm. <laughs> um, but uh, <coughs> it's so funny. Like, it, okay, so like, when you explain to people like now, somebody who's 20, mm-hmm. say, because you're 20, you're born in 2001. A child? You mean a child? Yeah. A baby? Yeah. So if you're 20, like, trying to tell someone the reason why. Vanilla Ice is in Turtles 2 because at the time he was like the biggest musical artist oh. in the world. Oh. In the world. I had the tape. I, I had the tape of. Uh, go Ninja! Yeah. Go Ninja! Go! Huh, yeah. Huh, huh, yeah. Huh. Have you ever seen a turtle get down? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, and, like, that man is basically now like a meme and a, like a joke. You know what I mean? And. Last to, time I heard of him, he was like flipping houses or some shit. Yeah. I mean, good on him, you know, but. Rob Van Winkle? His name is Robert Van Winkle. What type of shit is that? Uh, German. Yeah. 
if I had to just like you know make sense take a guess um, Joe Knight didn't give a shit what he was <laughs> made him hoop his pants yeah hung him out the window by your fucking ankle alright Dave what else you got for me you said you had something um, else to tell me oh yeah so um uh what was I gonna say oh um I'm sorry alright so um the house I'm living with, living with my wife we live in trail okay so um it's like one of those houses where it's like a couple steps and a little porch and then there's like the front door is up a very small step front door and then when you walk in there are steps that go right up to the second floor and the bathroom's right there and then you turn up the hallway and there's like our spare bedroom and our upstairs living room area and stuff right and so um i'm i'm you know tall-ish so i can see through that window up our stairs into the bathroom so the bathroom lights on i can see into the bathroom Mm -hmm. okay so this is when we were just dating, so we, I didn't live there or anything yet. So I was picking up for a date, and I she had a roommate at the time. Her name was Mel, and um, I it was like kind of like dusk time. It was like you know, and I get up there and knock, and I swear I heard like a coming or something, and I could see what looked like the shape of a woman come down the stairs. My waist five foot two, so just you know, like a shape of a woman coming out of steps and do 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 do. And I'm like, oh, here she comes, and the door doesn't open. And I'm like, okay, um, maybe she didn't hear me. And I'm looking and I don't see anybody, and so I knock again. And then I hear a louder, oh, come in! And then she comes downstairs and lets me in. And I go, did you come downstairs before? And she went, no. I'm like, is Mel home? She goes, no. I'm like, huh. She goes, what did you see? Tell me right now. Yeah. And I was like, well, I, I swore I saw, like, you come down the stairs. I saw, like, a... Because like a, it was... Because, like, um, the hallway light was on, not the bathroom light, and not the stairway light. Mm-hmm. So the only light is a little bit of light coming from the hallway and downstairs. So the, so the shape was, like, in silhouette. Even when she came downstairs, she was in silhouette. So I saw, like, the shape of a person come down the stairs, and nothing had no open door. Yeah. So that was it. So I just felt like I saw somebody come down the stairs, and then you know. But I'll tell you what, I have had more dreams about ghosts mm-hmm. since I lived in the house than I ever have in my entire life. So like once a month, I have a dream about a ghost in the house. Have once you ever month. looked into the history of your house? I don't want to. Oh man, it's, see that's where I get. I always ask people that you know when they tell me about an experience, yeah. and I say, well, have you ever looked into it? Yeah. Um, I remember. In the house I grew up in, my mother still lives there. In the dining room, or what once was the dining room, there used to be a, uh, I guess, residual ghost uh-huh. who would just uh, walk back and forth in the dining room, and he was wearing a black trench coat, black, like, wide brimmed hat, and never really looked up, just would kind of pace back and forth. Every now and then he'd look over at you, but he never interacted. But it was terrifying. I saw that for years. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. No, no I don't know. I don't, I don't know that. You know, uh, George Smitherton uh, slaughtered his kids with an axe in 1890. I just don't, I don't know about it. You know, it kind of wore off like the allure, or or the, I don't even want to say fear, but speculation mm-hmm. of like in a house, like did someone die here? Yeah. You know, because like my wife died in this house. You know, like so, it's right at the front door. So it's like that thing where it's like, ah, oh, someone died here. I think it just depends on the situation or something sure. that's going to stick around. Sure. Um, no, I, I do see the merit. I do see the, you know, um, I can understand the theory behind, like, the like the residual mm-hmm. effect. We're like, you're not necessarily seeing a ghost. It's like what something happened. Like a recording. Yeah, it's like something happened there, so it stays. Mm-hmm. I, I, I totally get on that. A, on a, like a loop. But can I tell you actually what my, th- my thought about ghosts are? It's mostly because, like, so I'm not religious in any way. I wasn't raised with religion, so I don't really, I don't, I don't have any belief on like an afterlife or God or gods. I, I just don't. You know? Where, where you say you're atheist, agnostic, mis- uh. I'm just like undecided. Like I, I just, I have, okay. I haven't been convinced by any kind of doctrine or anything like that. So you know, I just try to be. I kind of live by the golden rule. Treat people how you want to be treated. And well, this podcast yeah. is taking a quick turn because I'm going to tell you about the glory of the Lord. Oh. My <laughs> Um, you're like you're, you're like lock the door. You pull your 
the, the thing that says baptize in the water, and you're <laughs> like, buckle up, Dave. Um, <laughs> no, um, that's actually closer to truth. Because I'm a, I'm a bit of a religious nut. Okay. Uh, I just don't project it outward then. Sure, sure. Like, and I think the, that's the way most people should be. Yeah. Because, like... If they're your beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not trying to convert anybody. Yeah. Like, that, that's which, which is how mind. people that are religious, I think, I think should be, which is... If you're telling me that like you are deeply Christian, you're deeply Jewish, whatever it is, you're deeply Muslim, you should project your ideals and the tenets of religion through your acts and how you are, and not by telling some people, well, you know, if you don't believe what I believe, you're gonna go to hell. Yeah, like, you know, fuck all that on here. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that's not a good way to recruit someone. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be a dick to you until you agree with me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically, is I think that when um, so. You know, I, I I read some little thingies about like that. You know, time isn't linear, and also because I know you know they've proven that Einstein's gravity wave theories is, is true. There's gravity waves that go through our, go through space and time. Um, I think that when someone says it's all ghosts, okay, someone's in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, or in Gettysburg on a battlefield, okay, or they're visiting like the place where like the um, uh, what was the um, like, during the Revolutionary War. There was that big massacre. Bull Run? Yeah. No, no. It's, it was I it, don't know. Was it uh, Lexington and Concord? I don't know. But let's say you, you're, you're visiting like your. Where some people got slaughtered. Yeah. A lot of death. 2021, and you're visiting like a, a, a Gettysburg battlefield, right? And someone says, I saw a ghost. You're in Brown okay. Stadium where they get killed every Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Because they're like, someone's like, I saw a ghost. Okay. I don't think that they're seeing like the soul of a dead soldier walking around. I think what they're seeing is just a little bloop, like a little little fold in space time where you're seeing that soldier in his in real time, but you get a little glimpse. So I think that you're it's like I think there's little points where time folds on itself. Okay. So you think you're seeing like, you know, a guy that used to work at I know like I went at, worked at Remedy, there was a ghost of him called Chef. And I'm like, you know, he may have been like the guy that actually worked there, but you're not seeing his ghost. You're seeing him just working in real time in 1984. Okay. But you just see a little bloop, like a little blah. You know, that's what I think when you see ghosts. I mean, that's fascinating. I've heard of uh, time loops and yeah. time skips. I'd like to talk to someone who knows more about that type of thing. Yeah. I wouldn't even know what to call that person. Yeah. Because I feel like something like. Uh, time travel expert it's just an absurd thing to say <laughs> but you know what I mean someone who knows more about the, the people would think that you were instantly fucking crazy I guess like the metaphysics of it yeah you know that type yeah. of shit um I'm assuming that would probably fall under like what do you call it theoretical physics so I'm assuming that's what you would call, you, what, who would do that but I think it would be funny to be like hi John Smith time travel expert yeah people would be like this guy is um crazy <laughs> <laughs> I've had some experts on here that are uh, interesting. Oh yeah, that's the way I'll put it. And yeah. some of the topics are interesting. Well, I think people that are really, 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 really into anything, I think, are a little nuts because you have to be. That's why I always felt like the people that like, like if you go talk to, I guess, take about the stand up, like anyone who is a what you consider to be like a successful stand up comedian. Mm-hmm became obsessed with it oh, where, yeah. where they moved to New York or LA or Chicago and went to every open mic night and then going crazy and just like you know I think if you're going to be really good at one thing you have to go crazy about it so even that thing is like you know um, time te- travel temporal paradoxes yeah you know what I mean like you do you that's pretty cool now um, Dave before we get off here you do a show uh, I believe it's out of season currently yeah but it's uh Real Pittsburgh Stories? Is, Real, that what, is that what it's called? Real Pittsburgh Stories. Real Pittsburgh Stories. I was on that show. Uh, we did themed vacations. It was an absolute fucking blast. Uh, can uh, you tell me a little more about how you came up with that and how it started? Oh, sure, sure. So, like, um, I just keep it real. Like, honestly, like, I just got... I, I watched, like, every episode at that point of uh, This Is Not Happening. Okay. Which you watched in preparation, you know? Yeah. And I was like... I love telling stories, and I think that like my favorite comedians are people who are also great storytellers. Mm-hmm. So people like Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, you know, and like there was a guy who I love. He passed away from heart 
defect. His, his name was his name was, uh, was uh, Rashid. Okay, and he I saw him on Bad Boys of Comedy. Okay, and I saw him on um, I think I saw him on Def Jam as well. Okay, and both of his sets were just like a perfectly put together five minutes that was a story, but with great punchlines. Okay, and then and it was a big payoff, and I was like, it was just great. It was just a great, you know, it's like. I love when you meet people at like a bar or a party and they just tell you like everyone has like the story that they tell. That's their knockout funny story. And I, I love like meeting random weird people and they tell you a story and you just you laugh about it for forever. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. I can tell you stories that I heard from people twenty years ago because they were just so funny. You know what I mean? And so I was like, I could do that. And I kind of so um, before I played in that band Talk About It, which I played in a few more bands after that, I uh, did stand-up for two years. So I did two years of stand-up from like 2008 and through 2009. So I was still playing, I was still doing comedy while playing in the band at first. And I like, was one of those guys, I went to like almost every open mic, I booked like probably like two or three shows a, a month somewhere, you know what I mean? And um, I want to get back into it. So now, so now it's a few years of like not playing in bands anymore. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I need something to do. And I really miss doing stand up. Mm-hmm. So started going back to the hand bones of Mike. This is before his brain bridges. So I'm going back to the uh, hand bones of Mike and just kind of like, you know, message people from back in the day. You know, how are you? Are you still, are you still doing stand up and stuff? Like, let's you know, hook up and stuff and, you know, hang out when we can. And, um, uh, I was like, I need to like, I don't know, put a show together, you know. And so, I was like, I should have stories about Pittsburgh. So, honestly, the name is not very creative. I think it's, I think it's a good name. But I was like, well, we're gonna go Pittsburgh stories. Okay. When will that come back? Um. Oh, I don't know. Um. I mean, hopefully, hopefully the arcade will be able to move back inside mm-hmm. because I believe um, they per- had the first. Inside stuff that I think they were supposed to have it last night. Oh, right on. I think they're having like, classes again, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you what, the arcade, I can't say enough about Jason Clark and Michael Robino and the staff and the crew. It's arcade. a dope venue. Yeah. And, and you know what? Like, they really, they basically let a, like a no name comedian, that's me, who they didn't, they didn't know me from, 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 from Adam, you know what I mean? Well. <laughs> but they let just a guy who just emailed them. Put on shows at their venue. Yeah, and hope luckily people show up. People come to my show. It, I every time I'm so I feel so lucky and so fortunate. People, people, the fact that people spend their hard earned money to come see my dumbass show, I'm so forever fortunate. And obviously, if people keep coming, they'll keep booking me. And um, but yeah, so just shout out to Michael Robino and um, Mary Quick, who I know I think does the. Um, the event pages and stuff, okay. and Jason Clark, who's the general manager there at the arcade, and they've just been fantastic for supporting Pittsburgh comedy. Yeah, shout out to the arcade, uh, dope venue. Yeah. Make sure you check it out if you're in the Pittsburgh area. Yo, have you been out of Pissbox yet? I've not been down to Pissbox. Man, I, you know what? I really want to go. It looks amazing. I think like, <laughs> I think Marcus went. I feel like. Yeah, Marcus went. Uh, Andreas. Scriba, I think Joey Ferris was there. Yeah, the other night. Yeah. It looks really cool. I love because so I come from a background of like DIY punk rock. Mm-hmm. Okay, I love the idea. One of the things I tell people all the time, one of my mantras is, don't wait for someone to give you permission to do your art. Do what you do it. Okay, like, absolutely. Like, so, like if you want to do comedy and you're like, hey, no one will book me, or like I don't know where to go see shows, well, do your own shows. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? So it's it's sort of is like the piss the piss box. In case you're not sure, not aware of it, I think it's West Virginia, mm-hmm. right? It's I believe Morgantown. Morgantown, yeah. And and the piss.